What is up, aliens, humans, and all other ethereal beings? Welcome to episode two of What Up, Aliens? Uh, a podcast about mental health and positivity and jokes. We're hoping for a lot of jokes. It's what we're really hoping for. Um, and we're gonna find them. We're gonna work together as a team, like a like like dogs that smell people in rubble. And we're gonna find you jokes, and we're gonna deliver you to the people because they tuning in for giggles, big giggles. Uh, and we're hoping that we can deliver that. So we'll we'll do our absolute best. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode two. Shout out to everybody who's already subscribed to the Patreon, who subscribed to the YouTube, uh, who watched the last episode. I, it's not come out yet, so I don't really know uh, if it did good or bad. And, and I'll be honest with you, I care, but I don't. I care because I want to do well, but also I know it's going to maybe take a second. And that's fine, too. That's cool. We can slow build. If you think you can stop me from turning on my camera and microphone and just talking for an hour, you're going to have to try a lot harder than me getting zero views because uh, I'm not going to give up easily on this one. <laughs> I wasn't funny when I started stand up either. So and I now I'm, I'm funny enough. I can make some people laugh. Check out some of my clips. I, I, I'll make you laugh once or twice, hopefully. Um, yeah, man, we're here, and we're feeling good again today. Um, all right, segment one, daily check-in. How am I feeling, and how are you feeling? This is a time for you to check in with yourself as well. You can do it like I'm doing it with an app, or uh, you can just do it kind of right now in your car or at work or whatever you're Whatever you're doing. Um, how am I today? I'm rad. Again, once again, boom. Three days of rad in a row. Uh, I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm grateful. Uh, am I relaxed? No, I'm not really relaxed. I'm pretty pumped. I'm not tired, though. I'm not unsure. I'm not bored. Not anxious. Not angry. I'm not contented either. I'm not stressed or sad or desperate, so that's pretty good. That's, uh, that's three days in a row of feeling rad, rad, and rad. And that's because I got a bunch of new energy from this new project. Um, always get a nice pop of energy from a new project. And that's how I'm feeling with this one, man. Launched the Patreon last night. Uh, zero subscribers. Well, my girlfriend subscribed. So that's nice of her. Thank you, baby. Uh, but <laughs> other than that, you know, we got to wait. We got we to gotta wait for people to find it. It's a, it's a bit of a secret. Not really. But I haven't posted too much about it. So... We're going to keep that growing. We're going to grow that right up. Um, but, yeah, I, I almost I almost had a bad start to the day. It was real real dicey right on the edge because I tried to make myself wake up at 6.30 in the morning after staying up till 1. And you know how that goes. Nearly impossible. Snooze, snooze, and then you don't have another alarm. And so then you wake up at 9, and you're like, ah! And you start to almost hate yourself, but then you stop. And you just do what you need to do. Anyways, I should probably sit back so my head's not completely chopped off by the video. Uh, but most of you are, you know, listening to this, and you don't even care if my head's in the frame or not, and that's cool too. Um, probably a lot of you are driving to work right now. Uh, that's my hope, man. I hope you're driving to work and you're like, "This traffic sucks," but the dude on the radio or speakers, I guess, because I'm not on the radio, uh, is making me laugh. What if I actually just focused on making you laugh instead of talking about wanting to make you laugh? That might be funnier. I don't think it'd be great if a comedian just got on stage and was like, all right, I hope you laugh for 10 minutes. For 10 minutes, was like, now let's find some jokes. They're out there. I got to find them. It's like, you're supposed to have them. You're supposed to come with a bag of them and uh, bring it to us right away and not spend time trying to find it. But, you know, what are you going to do, man? I got a giant thing of coffee. Uh, I've got about 32 ounces of coffee. Oh, and it's the perfect temperature. Oh, and it's the perfect temperature. Oh, my goodness. Mmm. Look at that. Oh, man, there's something about coffee when it's perfect. It's hot. It's hot, but it doesn't burn you. And then it, and, and the way it, it interacts with all your cells, this is just beautiful. Uh, for the aliens listening, coffee is an invention by humans. We found a plant, and we love to find a plant and uh, change its molecular structure, 
to be bioavailable uh, so that it can get into our bodies. And coffee, what it does is it it's a it's a bean. And then we take the bean green, the green bean, and then we roast the bean. We add a little heat to it, and then it cr it becomes a brown bean. And then we we grind that up, uh, and we put it into hot water, and we drink it. And it tastes horrible at first, but then you just learn to love it, and you become addicted to it. And it has caffeine in it, and caffeine stimulates the human body and it gets your mind moving and it gets your body moving and it gets your bowels moving um and it keeps you just just pumped and jazzed and and i feel good off of it i'm, I'm pretty addicted to it and then when you combine it with a little bit of the lord's cabbage ooh, you're sailing through the cosmos baby uh so yeah if you're an alien you know stop by and get some coffee. Don't go to Starbucks. That's not the best representation of our planet. I'll be honest with you. You're going to want to find a small coffee shop. Uh, check Reddit. That's what I usually do. Reddit's a website. And you can find great coffee shops. Uh, great food. Also, when I tour, we're always trying to find great food. And Reddit's been a huge resource for us to find you know, the best of whatever kind of food we're looking for in that city. You just find one that's repeated over and over again. And you're like, all right, that's probably a good one. And we've had a pretty good success rate. Shout out Ray Lau. My buddy for uh, really getting deep into the trenches on Reddit and finding us the best food in every city that we are in. Um, yeah, it's 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 perfect. And I used to really not believe in the power of Reddit because I had a roommate that was too into Reddit and everything was Reddit. And then, and one day I had a, a clever comeback. I thought I was like, you know, Reddit's just a bunch of dudes. How can you trust a bunch of dudes? You know, you think that you're safe on Reddit, but you never know because someone could just say they're a doctor and then lie to you. Uh, but for food, it's been incredible, absolutely incredible, um, and it's gotten us some beautiful culinary experiences. Best culinary experience, you ask? Uh, Birdie Lou's in Portland went crazy. I, I, I still, and I don't know if it was just the mindset I was in. We had an incredible show in Portland, and I don't know if it was the mindset I was in, but I've never tasted better coffee than that. It's the best coffee you've ever had. And I don't know, you know, if that was a fluke or what, but it was beautiful. And it was a transcendent experience. And we had biscuits and gravy. Those went hard. And I get biscuits and gravy, like, everywhere. I'm a sucker for biscuits and gravy. I love them. Um, the biscuits were perfect. The gravy was perfect. The sausage was, oh, no, bacon. The bacon, actually. The bacon was, like, that perfect kind of, like, thick-cut bacon with, like, some kind of maple glaze. Ha! Oh, delicious. Um, and then we got a... French toast, a cinnamon roll French toast that we shared for the table. For the ta big, we're big for the table, boys. We love a sweet dish for the table. Everybody gets their own savory, and then we share a sweet. And it's kind of how you, you know, you eat the perfect amount of sweet. Uh, cause you know me, I'll go hard on some sweets, and it's not always the best way to start your day to just eat a giant thing of bread and sugar for your morning hours. But I love sharing it with friends and. Uh, bringing us together closer, bonding over some delicious uh, cinnamon roll French toast. It's a real dream come true. It's a real dream come true. Who's this guy? This guy's Cedric. I am Cedric, and I'm, uh, I, I review French toast. You know, I've traveled all over the United States in my uh, Volkswagen station wagon that's still running, uh, despite numerous mechanical problems, that I've really found that the Pacific Northwest just knows what they're doing with a French toast. They know the way around. I'll eat a hollow French toast. You know, I'll eat a hollow French toast, and I'll think, you know what? Maybe the divorce wasn't so bad. Uh, it really it just makes me feel incredible when I'm chomping on some hollow. I forget that I haven't seen my kids in six months. He turned southern sort of in the middle of that, but we, we don't hate it. I kind of prefer, actually, ooh, we get a little southern into Cedric, Cedric Wilson. And I'm a professional French toast reviewer. And I'll tell you where the best French toast is. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to give a guy like that just an insane laugh. Go well, up for Cedric, and, I, you know, <laughs> I love a mean waitress. I love a waitress who sits down and says, what the hell do you want? And I say, ooh, buddy. Food is going to be good 
shit or hell, you know, when they're mean to you. Something about that, the anger that they put into the French toast just really kicks up the flavor profiles for you. It's a good one. <laughs> well, yeah, and you know, I had French toast before my custody hearing, and and, and I lost the kid, so uh, what did I do? Got more French toast right after, and I felt better. You know, who needs kids when you got French toast? <laughs> who needs a who needs a loving home when you got French toast? <laughs> well, I'm holding it together by about a shoestring. But, uh, you know, thank you. Like and subscribe. That's what I like to imagine. Cedric's, uh, the... Cedric Wilson, the French Toast reviewer. And yeah, man, I'm going to be busting out characters all throughout this. Uh, we're going to find them, and we're going to maybe remember them, and maybe you'll comment uh, more characters, less characters, and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, b big story for me today. Crisis averted mental health-wise. I woke up upset with myself for not meeting an unrealistic goal that I set, set for myself. Par for the course. Still got up posted posted uh, those those videos on Instagram and uh, Reddit. Dude, shout out Reddit r slash standup. I don't know why it feels better to get 300 likes on Reddit. I haven't even gotten that yet. But 200 likes on Reddit for some reason feels so much better than thousands of likes on Instagram. I don't know why that, why that is. I guess Reddit feels more personal. Uh, feels more like... Instagram feels like people are going to you know, just sometimes engage mindlessly, whereas Reddit, it feels like, because it's such a curated space, it feels like when people like something on Reddit, they actually really like it, so, I don't know, we'll see, um, but I've been posting consistently on r slash standup, and it's been feeling good, man, just, just another social media, another one, and I guess Reddit is social media, but it doesn't feel like social media, uh, weirdly, Weirdly, it doesn't. And yesterday, I thought I was done with the Zen, but then I got, I bought more. Uh, boy, I cannot quit this stuff. Where I'm going to quit, and you guys are going to see it happen in real time. You're going you're gonna to watch my life transform as I kick my nicotine addiction. But today is not that day. Today, we are deep in, in the bowels of the nicotine addiction. And if you've got any tips for quitting Zen, the most addicting product I've ever, I've had cocaine. And that wasn't as addicting. I quit alcohol. I haven't had any alcohol for, it'll be two years in October. I haven't had any alcohol at all. Uh, that was easier than this Zen nonsense that I can't seem to quit. And I think it's because it doesn't feel as bad. Like, I, I assume it's ruining my gums and my general dental hygiene. I should go to a dentist. It's been a decade since I've been to a dentist Oh, shout out poverty and I guess anxiety. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to go to a dentist and he's going to be like, you have 365 cavities uh, and it's going to cost you $71,000 to fix it. And if you don't, you're going to die of mouth cancer. So that's the fear that I have. So if I have any dentist listening, and I don't, <laughs> I don't have any medical professionals. Um, I don't I don't know if there's a ton of medical professionals tuning into a steady McBlaze. <laughs> Maybe though. Also, man, I guess I wouldn't be surprised because, like, if you're stressed all day, maybe there's something nice about coming home and there's a dude who's just like, dude, bacon, bacon makes me feel happy inside. <laughs> maybe that is exactly what you need after a long day of saving lives in the ER. I don't know. I don't know what your content needs are, but you'll tell me. You'll tell me with your comments and your upvotes and your subscriptions. Um... Hey, and if you could send this to a friend, that'd be really rad, man. I'm trying to monetize the YouTube. I've got about 1,900 watch hours. I need 4,000. So I'm almost halfway. So if you could share the YouTube or, I don't know, go back and watch some of the videos. Um, that'd be huge, man. That'd be really helpful. And let me know what type of videos you want. I, the YouTube is up for grabs. The YouTube is is ripe for for uh, suggestion. I will make the whatever type of video people want to watch on there. No creative integrity on YouTube. Happy to sell out and do whatever. You want me to do burritos? I'll do it. You want to watch me eat a bunch of candy? I'll do it. You want to? I don't know, man. You tell me. I'll I'll make it. I'll make that content for you. Um, the stage is mine. I'm not going to do jokes suggestions on stage, probably. Unless it's really good. If it's a good one, I'll try it. But the stage is my art. And social media is, is a business, really. I'm happy to do whatever to make it uh, profitable <laughs> more than anything, you know. 
But at, at this point, we're just we're just happy that we're happy today. We're feeling good today. And if you're feeling good out there, shout out to you, man, because those good days don't come along often. Try to enjoy it. Try to try to enjoy this good day if you're having if you're having a bad day. Oh, take a deep breath. If you're having a bad day, don't worry. We all have them. I have a lot of them. And it'll pass. They they always pass. They all those bad days pass and you you know, a lot of times you don't remember it. Like I don't I feel like I don't remember probably cuz depression affects your memory, but I don't remember bad days as much as I remember you know, really good days. So just remember the bad days are they're temporary. They will pass and 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 then you'll get to a good day. You'll have a great day. Um all right, time for positive news stories and I am improving because I did research and actually came prepared with a couple positive stories for you. Uh there's a woman in the UK, her name is Miss Busy B, and what she's been doing is leaving positive care packages on popular walking trails for people to pick up they've got little notes in them and that made me think like bro what would my positive care package be i would leave if i was if i was a positive care package fairy what would i leave dude i would leave an eighth of weed an eighth of weed i would give you a pipe to smoke it out of um i would i would i would include an inspirational quote oh if i was really prepared i'd have an inspirational quote ready to go um i don't know something like the 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 uh the the only thing to fear oh fear is the mind killer i would dude from dune fear is the mind killer also i haven't seen the movie yet but there's a new twisters movie and it and, and in the trailer they have a quote that says we don't run from the fear we run towards the fear and when i saw that quote i was on acid and that was the perfect quote for acid we don't run from the fear we run to the fear and it really helped the rest of my trip honestly i was watching uh shut up don't speak be quiet for real this time or what it was it called the quiet place three the new quiet place and I didn't think it was a good movie, but I was also on acid. And I also didn't really like the other movie. And I didn't see the second one. The first one I thought was mid. And the second... Oh, I did see the second one. I thought that was mid, too. And I thought the third one, mid again. I, th I guess I just think the whole concept is mid. Uh, but if you like the first two, and you're allowed to, uh, then you'll love the third one. My friends that liked the first two loved the third one. They thought it was awesome. So, yeah. Get in there. Watch that, watch that new Quiet Place movie. Um, cause it's good. If that's, if that's your thing, dude, it's really, it's really good. But what else? We're hanging out. Um, we're feeling good today. I got a stand up show tonight that I'm actually excited for. I haven't done stand up, uh, on a show since I got back from tour and I've only done a couple open mics. Like I said, big punch in the face, uh, from tour took a huge hit to my confidence and my joy of stand-up. I really have been in a crisis with it. I haven't written anything new. So I'm excited to get on stage. I'm excited to write today because uh, when I got a show, I always write before it. So if you come to one of my stand-up shows, just know I'm prepared, way more prepared than this podcast. I show up with things to say that I've done, that I've said before that made other people laugh. And so the odds of them making you laugh are their ab absolute highest that they could possibly be. Um, and if you've been to a stand-up show, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, let me know in the comments where you saw me do stand-up and how you thought the show was. I'll, I'll take reviews. I'm super down. Uh, and and if you didn't like it, maybe, maybe I can tell you why. Maybe I can tell you what was going on in my head. Or, I don't know, maybe you just don't like my stand-up. That's cool. And if you don't like my stand-up, I'm not totally sure why you're here, but thank you for being here. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Maybe you like, yeah, that's the thing. We, we put out, I'll put out a variety of content. You got a podcast. Uh, maybe you like that. You got the Instagram. Maybe you like that. You got the stand up. Maybe you like that. Everything is not for everybody. So maybe that's what we're, that's how we're feeling potentially right now. Um, and also, yeah, if you go to the Patreon, let me know if you have suggestions for like what to do, uh, tiers, memberships, perks that you would like. I'm going to do a giveaway of a hoodie. Um. Again, prepared should have had the hoodie, but I'll I'll get the hoodie. Don't you worry. And if you subscribe to my email list, I'll be sending out an email. Uh, definitely subscribe to that email list. Let me know where you live, and I can help build stand up tours around that. 
Um, that's kind of my best indicator of where people are, so I can go do stand-up in those places. Uh, oh, next positive news story. They took a little cute dog, and they put seed packs on the dog and let the dog run around in the woods and plant trees. That's cool. And also found out that the bark of trees helps take methane out of the air. So that's a little two-for-one. They were unrelated, but they were um, they were both uh, good things. So, yeah, I mean, as much as global warming is a concern, it, the Earth will also help us fix it. If we tune into the Earth and aliens, uh, global warming, so basically we create a lot of, like, toxic gas with the production of our items our phones and our clothes and literally everything we make pretty much uh, and the food that we eat cows they fart methane and it is eroding our um sun blocker what's it called the, the the ozone it's eroding the ozone and that's bad not good for us heating up the earth and and such forth and uh we're not doing anything to stop it we're really not changing our ways at all uh, but the earth fights back with trees, trees. And so the dog is planting more trees, adorable. And also the trees are even more beneficial. We all already knew that the leaves help clean the air. And um, now we're finding out the bark is also valuable. The bark is also valuable. So that's incredible. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's great. That's great news, man. And then, oh, I saw a drug. I mean, I'm just got full of positivity this morning. Uh, I found out we got a new drug that you can take daily to help reduce breast cancer. That's awesome. And, you know, as I get a little bit older, 29, start knocking on the door of uh, potential medical events in my life. It's nice to know that science is catching up and we'll be able to fight back in a meaningful way against some of these things that we used to just be like a straight up death sentence. And now now you can you can get healed by science that's pretty exciting love that for us as a species and as a collective unit and that's that's the thing too is that that's my like most positive outlook is like what anytime somebody's freaking out about ai or anything in the future i'm like yeah but what about the good stuff what if ai like really just helps us all be more creative and take care of some of the menial tasks you know what if ai is just doing all of the stuff that you know, people usually did like taking orders at, at restaurants or something, and that frees up restaurant workers to be creative. And then we get a bunch more dope art, or we get, you know, more scientists or something out of it. That could be cool. Um, maybe AI helps medical professionals uh, process data faster, and then they can help more people. I don't know. There's, there's positive things and negative things at all times, but I think by focusing on the positive, it will help us. Um, that's what I'm trying to do, man. I'm trying, trying to be more positive. Already a more positive podcast than the last one. And sorry to the Patreon people. I edited it out for YouTube, but that clap, oof, what an annoying clap that was, uh, in the beginning. So my bad on that. Um, I don't want to apologize twice when it goes to the actual uh, Patreon part as well. Uh, my bad. You're paying a dollar. You don't deserve that. You don't deserve to have your eardrums blasted out for one dollar. That's ridiculous. Or five dollars. Or if you're an alien who bought the one thousand dollar tier, you definitely don't deserve that. That probably probably shook all of your. And so so for those of you subscribing, the Patreon will get better, uh, and the YouTube will get better. I'm grinding it out. Oh, boy, I love coffee. Yeah, one of my dreams, man. One day, one day I'd love to have my own coffee company. You know, my buddy Sam Skolnick, very funny stand-up comedian, great director, uh, great, you know, all-around creative filmmaker. Uh, that dude, and great actor, too. My buddy Sam showed me a short film, and if you live in a place where they make a lot of short films, New York, Austin, uh, L.A., I'm sure there's other places that have, like, huge film industries – You've all watched your friend's short film. And so he was like, hey, can we watch my short film? And we were all like, yeah, Sam, we'll watch your short film, expecting it to be awful. And then he played like what could have literally been an episode of Black Mirror. It was an, an incredible short film. Uh, and, and his acting was so good in it. And that's probably why he books roles in TV shows also. So shout out Sam Skolnick. Um, but uh, yeah, he roasts coffee beans and I had some and I'm a big coffee, not like snob because I don't I, I don't like 
really care. Like it is just a drug for me, and, I, and so I, I need to get that fixed. But because I drink just purely black coffee all the time, I can't taste the difference in different black coffees. Uh, and so he made me some and it was phenomenal i was like where'd you get this he's like i roasted it myself i was like you're a wizard dude you're a coffee wizard and so i'd love to partner with him um so if you would like to buy some a dirty bean juice from sturdy with blaze uh i guess let me know in the comments and if we get enough people that are interested in coffee we'll start making some coffee dude um yeah, that'd be fun. It'd be fun to it'd be fun to have a coffee that I liked that I could sell people, and that's kind of my biggest thing is I wouldn't sell coffee that was terrible. So I've had people be like, "Oh, you should just get beans from wherever and just put your label on them." I'm like, "Yeah, but if the beans aren't good, then I don't want to do that. I don't want to sell something I don't believe in unless it's for a huge amount of money." And it's you know that's what I've always my motto has always been: if I'm gonna sell out, I'm gonna sell out hard, all the way. <laughs> but uh for the most part, we try to actually support products that we believe in. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So if I do sell you coffee, you know that I'm drinking that and I think it's good. Uh, otherwise I would not be selling it. What coffee am I drinking now? Seattle's best from Ralph's, my local grocery store. And I also froze a bunch of coffee ice cubes so I can get that perfect temperature every time. And it's working like a charm. For the rest of the day, what am I doing? Uh, great question. I'm going to clean my room. My room is uh, disgusting. I have approximately, in my view, approximately 15 empty soda water cans. Uh, I drink soda water like an absolute fiend because I'm a recovering alcoholic. And so I'm drinking six of something every night. And right now it's sparkling water. Um, it takes a lot of beverages to replace alcohol. I got sparkling water. I got coffee. You know, I got it all. I'm, I'm drinking it. Uh, liquid is is coming in, baby. We're getting a lot of liquids in this body. Should I drink more water? Yeah, good good call. Um, aliens, if you haven't done the research, the human body is approximately like, what, 70% water? And uh, you got to drink it to stay alive. And I can be bad at drinking water. But I read something that says coffee hydrates you. And by red, I mean my girlfriend sent me a TikTok video uh, that says something uh, coffee hydrates you just as well as water. So I've been kind of clinging to that and like, well, I'm drinking a lot of coffee, so probably everything will be fine. But I don't really know if that's true. I don't know if everything will be fine. We'll have to wait and see. We will simply have to wait and see. But I don't know. I'm pretty hydrated most of the time. Uh, peeing clear. I know you were desperate. Austin, what color is your pee? Clear. You can see right through it. Is this what we want? We want me talking about my bathroom times? Probably not. Probably probably hoping for something else, but that's fine. Right now, it's bathroom talk. Uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're dealing with right now, dude. Um, what else? Oh, stoked and steamed. Let's do my stoked and steamed. I'm remembering all of the segments today. It's a big day. Uh, stoked and steamed. And as always, we'll start with the steamed. We'll start with the thing that's bothering me, and then we'll finish positively. Um, biggest first world complaint you're ever going to hear from somebody is my my shower is my steamed. I don't like it, mostly because it's not steaming. It is a... It doesn't get hot enough, first of all. And my roommate argues with me. He's like, no, it's fine. No, it's not, bro. Here's here's how I think a shower should go. You get in, and the water burns you, scalds you. It's boiling. Steam is pouring off of it. It's like a dragon coming out. Wah! Lava, molten lava. And I say, ow! And then I turn it down just a little bit to where it's kind of burning, kind of stinging, but not so much that I have to stop enjoying it. And that's my ideal shower. And I can only get that in hotels and other people's houses. My shower is warm. It's a warm shower. It's not a hot shower. Uh, and also, it doesn't drain properly. So I'm always standing in one to three inches of water. And the water pressure is completely gone. So what are you going to do? You know. And for a while, it was a lot better. And that was because um, one of my neighbors left a dab torch on next to our – we all have gas stoves in our apartment. Uh, her boyfriend left a dab torch on. She turned the, the uh, stove on to cook something. Whoosh, big fireball. And then she ran out of her apartment with her eyebrows singed off and uh, locked herself out. And so 
the sprinkler system did its job, but it did its job too well, and it ruined, like, I'm on the fourth floor, so the fourth floor to the first floor, all ruined uh, with water damage. They had to redo the entire thing, and when everyone moved out, all of a sudden, my water pressure was better, my shower was draining properly, and now, three, four months later, people have moved in, I lost the water pressure, my shower's not draining properly, and it's a giant first world uh, whiny boy complaint so do you have the time to listen to me whine about my water pressure and my shower um and you do i guess because you made it here what am i stoked about dude stoked about doing a stand-up show tonight stoked that i actually am recording this podcast you have no idea how often i say i want to do stuff and don't do them so stoked that i'm following through uh stoked that this coffee's hitting i have an insane amount of energy right now positively a d h d d all the way d um attention deficit uh, but it's not a deficit so i'm locked in dude i'm locked in off this dirty bean juice and i'm feeling good i'm feeling juiced in the morning Ugh. i feel like i could fight a hundred people right now Arr! and i would probably lose but i think i could uh, do some damage uh i got canceled at x games 2023 i got canceled uh by professional snowboarders at x games 2023 How did that happen? Dude, here's what it was. I started posting clips um, on TikTok as a character called Stony McBlaze that you've probably seen. And it wasn't always this gnarly. Uh, It started out way more chill, but I went to Groundlings, uh, Groundlings improv class, and I... I learned to do big, goofy characters there, and I would always get notes like, hey, dude, you're too big, bring it down, bring it down, and then when I had my own character and no one would tell me to bring it down, I just took it to the moon, dude, and pushed it as far as it could go. I took this Spicoli impression and turned it up to 91, (laughs) or 100, probably most videos, probably 100, and some videos I'd bring it down, but for the most part, I was way up, dude, and I started uh, reviewing like snowboarding clips. And just getting, like, real stoked. Because that was my beef. Like, I always felt like the announcers weren't uh, getting as stoked as they should be on on these clips. Like, these dudes were, were, were defying gravity. And God. And, and aliens, if you're listening, snowboarding is when humans strap a piece of, I don't know what kind of... Uh, material it is but it's basically plastic and it used to be wood we strap our feet into it and we fly down a mountain as fast as possible and then along came pioneers of the sport and they were like what if we took skateboarding combined it with snowboarding and now we got half pipes and dudes go up in the air and twirl around a million times and come back down they go on rails and they they they, they twirl onto rails and off road they flip and they it's mind-blowing especially if you've done snowboarding and you know how hard snowboarding actually is snowboarding's impossible and these dudes are are, are blowing my mind every single time and the announcers are always just like, oh yeah, and there goes uh, Sean White with another incredible Mick twist. Whoa, look at Sean go. That's 71 gold medals for Sean White. I can't believe it. What'd you say it was for lunch? Chicken salad again. Ah, fuck, I can't eat chicken salad every single fucking day. All right, Dusty Hendrickson with another incredible run. And I just felt like they weren't doing it justice. And because low-key to them, it's kind of regular. Like, if you watch enough snowboarding and you're, and you're a commentator, you've done it. So, so the tricks don't seem as, like, mind-blowing to you because you're closer to it. You understand it. It's like when I watch stand-up, you know, I'll see some stuff that people love. And I'm like, eh, it's not that impressive to me because I'm, like, close to stand-up. I kind of see the magic. If you're a magician, that's probably the best example. You'd be like, oh, that's not that crazy of a trick. You just palmed the card behind his hand. That's, you know, we learned that day one in magic school. Um, so I was like, these dudes aren't getting nearly stoked enough, not nearly stoked enough. Uh, and so I was like, all right, I want to break some stoke. So I had this character and then I started, you know, commentating, obviously exciting stuff like snowboarding and skateboarding and action sports. And then it was like, oh, it'd be kind of funny if I took this insane stoke and I brought it to like mundane everyday things. So then I started doing like people restocking uh, their, their kitchens with food, and I was like, oh, dude, I love string cheese, let's go, go squeezy yogurts, and I would, like, 
say a bunch of the words wrong and and it was fun i had fun doing it and people started really really fucking with it uh got like 20 million views on one uh where i was restocking uh, somebody's restocking a bathroom and then yeah i built it up i had like you know two million followers on tiktok i had like i don't know 100k on instagram something like that and then x games slid into my dms uh and they're like hey you want to come out to aspen and i was like dude fuck yeah, how much you paying me, and they were like, zero dollars, but we'll put you up in a hotel, and it was a super nice hotel, I looked it up, it was like $1,500 a night, uh, incredible hotel, they had the, those comfy terry cloth robes, I was feeling good in the mirror, I was like, ooh, 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 I look incredible, I'm luxury, I am wealth, uh, and then, they would have me out, and I would, like, jump in on the, uh, the Twitch stream, and just do, like, goofy interviews, and then I was the weatherman one day, and they had me do this thing where they're like, hey, give us a weather report. And I was like, oh, the stoke is high, and so am I. I'm back to you, Hannah Rad. And I was having a blast. I was running around. There was, like, food vendors, so I was eating free food. I was watching some of the best snowboarding. I was snowboarding in Colorado for the first time. Um, and that's something about me that's surprising. I'm really bad at snowboarding. Because I grew up in upstate New York, so we had one mountain, which was just a hill, and I went twice. And then I lived in North Carolina. There were some real mountains. I went a third time. And then I went with my ex-girlfriend's family on two snowboarding trips. So by, by the time I got to the X Games, and then I, before the X Games, I went one more time. So I went to the X Games having snowboarded like six times in my life. Um... So I even I, I did three runs uh, at Buttermilk or four runs at Buttermilk in Aspen. So by the time I got out of X Games, I had snowboarded in the double digits for the first time. So I'm actually really new to snowboarding, but I got that Icon Pass this year, baby. So we're going a bunch. I'll see you boys at Bear Mountain, dude, and Mammoth Mountain, dude, and in the Colorado mountains that also accept the pass and other places, dude. I'll be doing snowboarding trips. I'm going to try to set up a snowboarding stand-up tour. It's going to be fun. Um, and I've got this uh, YouTube series, Poser to Pro, where I like am, am chronicling my journey of going from a uh, terrible snowboarder to one that could one day be invited to the X Games. <laughs> That's my goal. That's my 10-year plan. Be invited to the X Games at 40 um, uh, for the ultimate redemption run <laughs> of Stony McBlaze. But it's taken it's taken some time, so I'm not as good. I almost died um, with a couple with a couple of uh, fans and friends in in Colorado uh, this last year. I was I was up at uh, Arapahoe Basin, and these these people that came to my stand up show the night before were like, "Hey, we're up here too. Come smoke weed with us in the woods." And I was like, "Hell yeah!" So I smoked weed with them in the woods, and then they're like, "All right, the only way to get out of the woods is to go through the woods." And if you've never snowboarded in trees before, it's not easy. Basically, I would go straight for about 100 yards and just fall and then go straight and then fall and then go straight and then fall. I was essentially throwing myself down the mountain. Uh, and then everything started cramping. My legs, my back, my abs were cramping up. It was, it, I was like, ah. So basically, I almost died in the woods in Arapahoe Basin. Also, the altitude was absolutely kicking my ass. Um, real eye-opening of like how bad I actually am at snowboarding uh in Arapahoe I tried to go to this one part I could and it was like all right you go you get to this part and then you hike up and then you s snowboard back down I couldn't even get to the transfer part because it was like an up and down it was really narrow and fast and I just couldn't control it and so I speed checked too early and couldn't make it up over the final hill it was a whole thing dude so uh I'm at X Games, and I'm having a blast. Day one, day two, incredible. I linked up with Half Cab King uh, and Snowboard Jesus, and that'll come back later. Um, and we were having a blast. And I took so many pictures. Like, I usually don't feel famous. Uh, I don't really think I am famous. And then at X Games, I took hundreds of pictures with people who were like, oh, my God, it's Sony Big Plays. What? Um, which is crazy. It's always crazy because you get comments like that, and then just seeing people in real life, it was an absolute blast. Uh, one time I had to go to the bathroom and I was like, I, I didn't want to get stopped to take pictures. So I literally had to put my hood up. Like I was Leonardo DiCaprio. It was crazy. And I've never been that famous. And I don't know if I ever will be that famous again. That may have been the peak of, of, of my hype. And that's fine. I got to experience it and it was a blast. So it seemed like I was there bringing a ton of joy to people. But there was one person who I brought zero joy to. Todd Richards. 
And some of you may know Todd Richards. People consider him the Michael Jordan of snowboarding. Uh, he took He's one of the guys that took snowboarding from just a downhill race to, like, he, he brought in the the skateboarding aspects, so like the half pipe and the skateboarding tricks. He brought that into snowboarding. He changed snowboarding forever. Absolute legend of the sport. Um, like I said, Michael Jordan of of snowboarding and to me he's the michael jordan of hurting my feelings uh this dude posted a video on his instagram and he was upset with a lot of stuff at x games he tuned in and they were doing like minecraft on the twitch stream he's like this isn't snowboarding and then young gravy did a performance that everyone thought was terrible like uh, during the medal ceremony, so they gave medals, but they kind of cut it short so Young Gravy could do a performance, and he was like, Young Gravy sucked, and then uh, he's like, and they've got these influencers on the slopes pretending to be high, uh, this is ridiculous, it should be focused on the athletes only, and nothing else, um, and he was, you know, and it's because X Games had just been purchased by a private equity firm, and... So they were trying some new stuff with the marketing. And then I was doing duets. Like, I, I was doing duets. Uh, Maddie Mastro was one that I did. She she had an incredible gold medal run I th or silver medal run. It was a phenomenal run. She should have gotten a gold medal if she didn't. It was incredible. Um, she did, like, an 1,800 in the air. It was It was beautiful. And I was doing duets and posting them. And I was doing skits and posting them and collaborating with X Games. And, yeah, so Todd was upset. And uh, he posted a video and it started getting traction on day three. And then Monday, day four, he posted a, his podcast. Uh, I forget w what the podcast is called. Um, but basically, this one was Shit on X Games, the podcast. And, uh, and he posted it the wrong way. So, like, on Instagram, it's like this. He posted it like this. So, I was watching it like, oh, my God. We're getting cooked. We're getting cooked, boys. Uh, and then Snowboard Jesus went to the comments and he was like, I don't even know who Todd Richards is. And that, that was a mistake. Um, and I've stayed, uh, he got just absolutely destroyed, uh, online, unfortunately, cause he's a great guy. Um, but he, he, he posted something and got destroyed. So I was kind of staying quiet. I haven't, this is honestly the longest I've talked about it, uh, somewhat publicly. I've been doing jokes about it in my stand up uh, at some of the shows. So you might recommend you might recognize some of the punchlines I used uh, in the retelling of the story from my stand-up set. Um, can't resist a nice little laugh. Uh, if I know I can get it, I'm gonna try to get it. I'm gonna get those laughs. Um, come here, give me those laughs. I want them. Uh, so Todd was upset, and honestly, I didn't really get roasted as hard as I thought I was getting roasted based on my comment section. Um, Basically, they were just like, you know, I, I get the Stoney McBlaze thing. It's not for me. I don't think it's funny. Uh, I think it's dumb. And then from there, people just started commenting on my collaboration posts with X Game. And even in some of my comment section, they're like, you're the cancer of our sport. You've ruined snowboarding. You're what's wrong with snowboarding. You suck. You're not funny. This is dumb. You disrespected snowboarding. You ruined the X Games. And then Dusty Hendrickson posted... Uh, who's like a gold medal snowboarder, and I really looked up to him. Yeah, I thought he was rad. Uh, my first ever TikTok duet was Dusty Hendrickson winning the Monster Energy uh, Grand Slam. That's not what it's called, but the Monster Energy competition. He won that, and it was an incredible run, and a slope-style run, so it was like a mixture of air tricks and rails, and it was like fire, dude. He crushed it, and he's an incredible snowboarder. So he posted one of my duets with a clown emoji over my face and then for his recap of the x games he's like hey thanks to snowboard jesus and young gravy and stony mcblaze for the circus um and then i posted a duet of somebody snowboarding after that like a pro and they're like hey take this down and so yeah got a lot of hate from that todd richards really conjured up an army of angry snowboarders and then I tried, I was like, I sent the X Games an email. I was like, hey, love to come back. Had a lot of fun. They're like, no, thanks to the controversy, we're going to pass this time. Um, and basically, I've kind of stayed away from all things professional snowboarding since then. Like, I don't do at professional snowboarders. I just, I'm like, all right, if you guys think I'm annoying, then I will go away. That's totally, totally fine, dude. Uh, I don't want to mash anybody's mellow. Um, yeah. So that's the X Games story. Completely changed my relationship with professional snowboarding. And they're also roasting me for being bad at snowboarding. I was like, yeah, you are right. Like, I should get better. So I've been trying to get better. Um, and my ex girlfriend was like, hey, you should, you don't, you shouldn't worry about that. Like, you're literally a um, 
comedian, not a snowboarder. So focus on the comedy. But for me, I'd rather be good at snowboarding and then pretend to be bad for a joke. Uh, so I can actually keep up with my friends. Like that was the other thing in Arapahoe Basin. I was snowboarding. Uh, and there were some skiers with us too, who are actually cool guys. You know, we give skiers a lot of shit, but they're actually, they're actually pretty rad, and they're pretty much trying to do the same thing as us. So let's all get along, okay? Um, and that goes to you, skiers. Don't shit on snowboarders either, man. Uh, we're we're nice dudes. Uh, you know, we're, we're cool. We're just trying to get down the mountain like you, trying to be gnarly. We're all try We're all chasing the gnar, man. Um, so. Yeah, I was with them, and I couldn't keep up. Like, I was too bad at snowboarding to keep up. So I was like, all right, that can't happen two years in a row. So this year, really focusing on getting better. Got the Icon Pass, like I said earlier. Uh, so Big Bear Mountain, Mammoth Mountain, I'll see you up there. Uh, see me up there getting better. Feel free to yell tips and tricks at me. Feel free to teach me. Uh, if there's any snowboard instructors, I would love lessons. I've taken zero formal lessons. My buddy Dave has helped me give, give me some pointers, but I've been kind of learning it all by feel uh, for the most part. Uh, and I'm getting better. I'm better than I was last year. So that's all that you can do is try to get better every year. Uh, just like this podcast, try to get better every episode and and see how it goes. Um, all right. This has been an over-caffeinated uh, version of this podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like, subscribe, rate the podcast on Apple and on uh, Spotify, all those places. Five stars is appreciated. If you're going to rate less than one, DM me why you want to rate me less than one and let me know. Um, this is the end of the regular episode. Full episodes available on Patreon. One dollar subscription at the lowest tier. And then we have a five dollar subscription that lets you actually... Um, comment i'll listen to your comments if you pay five dollars i'll listen if you pay one you get what you get at one dollar I'm, I'm very sorry but you get what you get at one dollar uh and once we get enough people in there a uh, hundred once we get a hundred subscribers i will start doing live streams inside and i'm gonna smoke joints and you know roll up and uh we'll all get nice and toasty together thank you so much for tuning in have a rad day stay stoked